News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good morning to you. This is News Line live as always from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And uh, it's another wet morning. So safety please on your way to work and wherever else you're going or even when you are exploring this beautiful country of ours. Uh, this morning we're here to ask a parliamentarian from the other side uh, as to what on earth is happening in terms of good governance or governance at least and uh, to participate in this uh, uh, to answer that question is uh, Dr. Ramesh Patran all the way from Gaul but not quite He's right here with us in the studio. Very good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Faras. And lovely to see you again. Good to see you again after some time. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, Doctor, now, I was wondering if you'd tell us what the joint opposition or what the opposition was doing in all these months that this government has been, uh, for want of a better word, systematically dismantling democracy and good governance. Like, for example, the Exchange Control Act. That's just one point. We have got departures from procedure when it comes to national procurement matters. Uh, we have had the insulation of the CCEM and now dismantled by uh, the President because he couldn't uh, bear continuing with this cabinet within the cabinet, which is probably usurping his powers. Uh, and, and so it was a little cabinet uh, which was staffed by the Prime Minister and his uh, known people. Um, that, was, that was another point. That we had a whole series of uh, fiscal mismanagement, a dollar from uh, the Rajapaksa years from 131 or 2 uh, is today 162 or nearabouts there. And it appears that everything is at sea. And the price of coconuts has gone up. Uh, the the common man, uh, Joe Public, um, their cost of living, their basket of essentials has gone up. There will be some debate to say, well, you can eat manioc or whatever else it is. So we'll have to ask doctor, the other doctor, uh, Sena Ratna, about that because he said something. So what was the joint opposition? What was the opposition doing whilst this was all going on? Were they asleep, I wonder? It's not so actually. So people elected this government to power thinking that there would be better governance yeah. and uh, they expected better economic performance from this, uh, from, from this government. Yeah. But they did not deliver as promised. That's yeah. what you could see. Yeah. During the initial first months, so when that 100 day program came into power, yeah. so from the first month onwards they got, into, uh, they got engaged in this uh, unwanted and unwarranted activities in relation to financial mismanagement. Yeah. That's how the bond scam came to light. Yeah. So from the day one, so from the first week onwards in relation to bond scam, we voiced our concern if you could remember, yeah. then opposition leader, Honorable Nimal Siripa the Silvan, who were spearheading the campaign against the bond scam. So we were rallying around and we were, uh, you know, we were enlightening people about what was going on in there. So from that day onwards, you know, the economic mismanagement was very clearly visible. So we've shown the people, we have told them. And but uh, apart from voicing our concern, we went ahead uh, showing a protest. We have a protest march, you know, we, we mm. had uh, this protest march uh, coming from Candy to Colombo. And we had our you know, other rallies uh, all around the country. Mm. So we had shown our protest. But it was, I think people of this country were also a little reluctant to take part at that point because having seen our government for 10 long years, mm. people wanted to have a change. Mm. Whatever good things had be delivered, people thought, okay, if Rajapaksa is outstead, you can have a better future. Mm. So people were a little observant during that period of time. Mm. So it took some time for people to realize from the day one onwards, we, as the opposition, we also could not raise the voice up to the level that you wanted to have, probably the people of this country wanted to have. Mm. But, you know, from our side, to, to be fairness to our side, we are not the legal opposition. Mm. So it's the legal rights of the legal opposition had gone to TNA and the Janatha Mukti Peramuna. So we are a sort of a breakaway group from the UPFA. So yeah. part of UPFA members, our colleagues, they decided to hang on to the government. So they formed the coalition government. And in our case, we formed the joint opposition from 
2015 August election. Yes, but so you know, yes. so we have the view that we have done our part to uh, tell the people what, what was going on, and also we have had uh, our share of protest against the government. But now, for, let's let's look at Sri Lankan Airlines. Uh, you didn't really make too much of a noise on that, and it is because uh, this government uh, installed, obviously, like they tend to do, they install people loyal to them. To that, to yeah. their political ideology, uh, but in in case like Sri Lankan Airlines, this prized national, which can be a national asset, has con uh, has been uh, a complete disaster. Uh, we went from a chairman in the Rajapaksa years who was a planter um, and uh, better known as the brother-in-law of the president then, um, to be the chairman of this thing. I mean, with all, he's a terribly nice man, but. Uh, you know, with all fairness, I think he was out of his debt when it came to dealing with Sri Lankan airlines. A, it's top heavy. Uh, B, it's heavily politicized. And C, uh, the unions can be strong. Right? But in all of this, the focus of having a national airline, to be able to feed uh, and play uh, a lead role uh, as the partner in the leisure and uh, hospitality industries development, uh, and to put bums on the seat to bring them in here to this country um, completely seems to have gone uh, gone wrong. Even under this regime? Under this regime. But what my point being that what, didn't you all make enough noise because you all knew what had gone on under your regime? No. Uh, there had been a debate about Sri Lankan Airlines yeah. and um, as you probably in your point of view, you mentioned that we have not given necessary impetus or necessary yeah. weightage in relation to Sri yeah. Lankan Airlines issue. But uh, historically, even during our time, there had been a few criticisms. But yeah. on the other hand, we need to take into consideration the fact that uh, the crude oil prices were at a very high level, so yeah. the airline was not making profits. Yeah. Historically, it has not made profits, actually. Yeah. So uh, with the transformation, we were expecting actually Sri Lankan Airlines to perform better, but it had gone wrong again. But we well, voiced our concern, but maybe not up to the level that we expected because it's, it's again a matter uh, related to a specific area. People ask about, you know, you ask about the cost of living. Yes, that's a matter which is really concerned. And also about the bone scam. People talked about it. Yes, talked but, about it. But, also, but, you, but also, you know, whilst we know and, uh, and we, we know and we acknowledge and we continue to uh, try and hold uh, as media um, organization try to hold those in power uh, to be those with authority um, uh, to be accountable and responsible yeah. we, we also don't forget and we, we will continue to remind uh, that in the previous government we had troubles of um, also of a different nature uh, amongst those uh, are uh, human rights uh, violations and uh, we had those dreaded uh, blessed white band syndrome and it was obviously uh, a military operation that went wrong and we have uh, white bands that were used in the guise of trying to uh, combat another arm of terrorism uh, to, to capture those who were not openly uh, LTT and so on. Uh, we had the white man syndrome and it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a joke, it was, it was there for real. Um, oh, let me, let me, let me. They, they, they were there for real. We, our network, <laughs> Dr. Patadana, our network was bombed. The, it wasn't just a bomb, it was a Claymore bomb. And, you know, it was a serious attack on, uh, on the media. Uh, the media were, were, were forced to um, be quiet themselves because they were, the large sections of the media, we continued as we did, and we continue as we do. No, no. And we will continue. Uh, hats, off, hats off to you. So you've been uh, quite uh, vociferous about what was uh, going on in relation to our government and also about this present government. And, 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 and I'm, I'm not here to, for us, I would uh, state categorically the fact that I'm not here to justify some of the things that had happened during our government which were bad. Yeah. That's why we were outstayed. That's why we were defeated by the popular vote of this country. But as you mentioned, you, you, uh, you have asked me this question in one of the previous programs as well about the white van syndrome. Yeah. Nobody has seen that. And that was, a, you know, that was well, the, the, the created by, 
No, probably certain things had gone wrong. I'm sorry, I acknowledge uh, that fact. Yes, but, but doctor, nobody had seen white vans. But, doctor, but we but, saw uh, white vans under this government about a year and a half ago mm. when they were trying to kidnap an uh, activist of the Medical Faculty Students Union in but front we, of the Organization of Professional Association. Yeah. We saw people of this country saw white vans only on that particular day. Before but, that, yes, people voiced their concern about white vans, but nobody had seen. But it doesn't what, mean what? that there were. It doesn't mean that you know there were activities activities against the free media movement. Yeah, there had been, but it doesn't mean that it was a government mediated ones. There could be we, other, we other find, interesting we, elements we like the armed forces. You know, the names are surfaced oh, out from the different yes, quarters. Yes, but the point is that the government was complicit in the murder of my colleague, my friend, uh, the friend of this network, and easily Sri Lanka's most. Outspoken journalists in contemporary times, Lassanta Vikramatunga. What happened it's to the investigations? It no, is the, in the well, million dollar question is? The million dollar question is this, that all the investigations are being hampered perhaps now. By whom? Not old, by the, the actions of those investigating officers uh, who undertook the investigation at that time. There was a comprehensive cover-up going on. Lasanta Vikramatunga. That's the, the the notebook was taken away. They they, they charged some chap just uh, who robbed the telephone at the scene of the accident. Um, and they wanted to charge him with the murder. He had nothing to do with it. He was just a, a petty thief who who uh, was an opportunist and took the telephone away. Um, Keith, Keith Noya's uh, thing. There was a wholesale. There's no way one can. Uh, to, uh, dis discount this white van syndrome. We know that. We had police officers in and around Colombo who were given orders to take various people into custody. They went there in, uh, uh, in civvies and they took them. They were shipped off to the east or wherever it is. Some were handed over to this fellow Karuna, right? And, and, and the list is going on and on. No, and you, those things cannot be, we can't forget them. And that's why, perhaps that's why, when the, the, we had these local government polls, and when this government got a drubbing of their lifetime, the UNP in particular and the SLFP too, that is why a little known fact is, or, or not highlighted enough, was the fact that the, uh, the so-called opposition, the joint opposition, the SLPP, even then, they didn't get over 50%. They got under. No, so, so there are so, so, so many you know, different questions. You know. In relation to uh, the, 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 the slaughtering or the cleaning of the uh, La Santa Vikram uh, incident, so it is the, the duty of the present government to bring the culprits to book. You know, it's not an excuse for them to say that, okay, these investigations were hampered at that time, all the documents were destroyed. Who are the people who are responsible for that? It is the responsibility of the government to tell the people, show the evidence that these evidence were destroyed at that time and bring the culprits to the book. It's, the, it's not, the, it's not, the, not, it's not, not an excuse to say that, okay, during our regime, during our time, this happened and the, the evidence were destroyed. It's not a proper you excuse. See, very, people very in this country very, do very, not believe that, yes, but, uh, for us. Yes, but doctor, also, uh, yeah. also, doctor, the, the people of this country, just because were the, the Southern Highway and the highways now, in this government, uh, the, the costs have gone beyond higher than what the Rajapaksas had per kilometre. Yeah. Doesn't mean that that is a good yardstick. Yeah. The Rajapaksa administration shifted the yardstick right up there in terms of the per kilometre cost. And when, when I asked the question, uh, when I was uh, in the print media, uh, when I posed the question about the Southern Expressway, they said, oh, well, you know, there are, it's not all flat. There, there were mountains and so on. Well, that's the same excuse chap called Lakshman Kirial is doing in, in this government about the Central Expressway. It seems to me that it's all the same. So we can't, we can't excuse uh, the previous government. The, the, I mean, Mihin Lanka. What was that? That was a complete disaster. Um, no, I know that. Totally uh, No, it, it's, it's, it's a relative term that we are talking about for us. People looked at the government, okay, we have done certain good things. So that's why people started appreciating our government again. But people thought at that time, it's the post-war era. So in relation to different activities that took place in the society, 
you can't blame the you can't blame the rajapaksha solely there may be let's other find out, let, let's find out why we can't let's find out why we can't blame the rajapaksha no, can, after this break okay just after the break we come back and uh, rejoin uh, uh, dr pramesh patrina do join us this is after all newsline news first newsline with faraz shaukatali Faraz Shaukatali. And welcome back to Newsline, where we are having a rather robust discussion with Dr. Ramesh Patilena, who is representative of the other side, the opposition. Uh, sometimes called the joint opposition, but it's still the opposition. Now then, Dr. Patilena, we know about the past, we know about the present, but what will... Um, you know, this is sad. I don't know quite how to put it, so I'll put it like this. People should not stand up for anyone anymore because I think they ought to be standing up for themselves because our country has been raped. And I would go a little bit further to say that our country has been raped criminally. We've had, yes, yes, we are very uh, adamant and, uh, uh, you know, all that about the former governor, so the search bank, now the fugitive governor, and we and what's appalling is that the prime minister, the man who recommended, the man who gave assurances that he would deliver, that he would uh, he would look after things, that he assured the cabinet that he would be good, and he's uh, turned out to be a rotten egg. Uh, that that's my view. It has still to be tested in the court of law, but. Hey, you know, Arjuna Mind, and if you want to come and take us on, please do. Uh, but these are all. The, what I'm, I think what yeah, I'm this saying is the general is, person, you know, the people, or the great majority of the people of this country. But yeah. yes and no to the the, the, the question. Yeah. From 1950 onwards, we had seen we have not seen a significant economic development in this country. But from 97 onwards, when the economy was opened up by previous uh, uh, His Excellency Jaya Jayavadana, former president of this country, yeah. we had seen a robust growth of the economy. Economy and was I developing think, at think, a pace of about 8 to 7%. And thank God for Jaya, because if he did yeah, bring right. his brand, that's right. we would still be so, in, in so, uh, under Mrs. Bandranaik's true. Um, true. I, I, homegrown I, I, I acknowledge that fact. Go, so economy economy. started growing, but unfortunately there had been that ethnic rights in 1983, which yeah. hampered everything. Otherwise, Sri Lanka would have been a newly industrialized country. But that growth was and hampered. Yes, and don't we and know this, about and the, and the country rise. was going through. Country was going through mayhem. So the, uh, his pres uh, the, his excellency president Mahindra Rajapaksha ended 30 year old civil war. Whatever said and done, it's a different question. Even though we uh, won the war, whether we that won the peace is a different question. Yes. But again, our our economy started developing at a significant pace. But what because is, what is annoying, at, Dr. Patrin? No, it was developing at the, you have, to, you have to look at the two sides of the same coin for us. Yeah. We, I am not here to justify whatever the, whatever the bad things that had happened during our time. But you have, but, but you weigh the bad things and the good things that had happened during our time. I think there were more better things, more good things than the bad things that happened. That's why people appreciated that government. You know, as, there as, been, as we do, our media, we our media, the war, our media. Been, their economy was growing at a significant pace. There had been significant infrastructure development in this country. You, you, no, not only the, uh, not only the road network for us. You come to the power generation. Or actually had its troubles, but you know we have 24 pass. hour uninterrupted power coverage which covers 99% of the households of this country. You know, the pipe-borne water and the, the pure drinking water was supplied to more than 50% of the houses in this country. And, and, the, and, the, and the UNP and will the be, a, yeah. the UNP will be so, aghast if so, I didn't say at what cost. Because yeah, at, at what cost? But, but okay, leaving aside... So you have to, you have to look at this to to comparatively. Yes, so I, people, I, I, people I, had elected a new government to power, yeah. and now people have started comparing our government and the new government. Yes, so but, I want, to say, but yeah. I want to say this to you, that our media, the, the Maharaja Group's media uh, network, we don't color you uh, with the faults of others, but... And we, we hold you in good esteem because we find, you know, you, you come here and you're rather uh, professional and uh, uh, honest, sometimes brutally honest, which we appreciate because we need that. We need more of you. If we could only photocopy and reproduce another 224 of you, 
we might just be on the right path. Oh, thank but, you very much. Uh, but you know, but in the mean in the meantime, we need to uh, <coughs> we need to acknowledge that what the Rajapaksas did in after they, they, they finished the war and so on. But the annoying part is that they lost a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity. opportunity. When this whole country was as one, yes. when on the day it was announced that uh, <coughs> the war had finished, that Prabhakaran had been um, eliminated, the euphoria throughout this country is something that it would be hard to recreate. And very, very sadly for all of us, President Rajapaksa showed an abysmal lack of leadership when he couldn't convert that in, into one of great reconciliation. And I'm sure he doesn't go to bed a happy man because he must be regretting yeah, that. Know, yeah. And at the end of the day, uh, from the people's perspective, uh, I, I can't see any difference between uh, that government and this government. This government also they had an opportunity. What have they done about it? No, actually, uh, you said a mouthful. We also regret the fact that we, we missed that golden opportunity. Yeah. So it's, it was um, His Excellency Mahinda Rajapaksha who would have done the, the reconciliation process that in the manner that we wanted to have. But uh, the, the, the story, uh, the, the, the story that, we, that is not heard is the fact that he had extended his arm of uh, reconciliation to the Tamil people and also the Tamil National Alliance. They did not want to take it because they were of the view that they can have a better opportunity, better chances in relation to devolution from another party. That's what that's what they were trying to do. So he had extended. He he actually promised 13 plus to the Indian government, uh, thinking about a Senate, establishing a Senate, which might have uh, appeased the Tamil community of this country. But TNA, Tamil National Alliance, always had this uh, antipathy towards Rajapaksha. Governance, so they they did not take it up. So unfortunately, because if uh, President Mahinda Rajapaksha gave something to the Tamil people of this country, greater majority of Sinhalese people would have accepted that. So yes. we have missed that great opportunity. But it, is, but it doesn't mean that that's have, end of the road. We, we seem we to have, have learned a lot of opportunities. JR's government time, uh, when uh, on the day that, for example, the uh, I'll mention the brand because it's such a big brand. Uh, when Sri Lanka was bereft of international brands, we, the Hilton came in. It was actually signed on the day that the, uh, the troubles broke out in 1983. And, and hats off to uh, that wonderful hotelier, Coral Pereira, who, um, who managed, uh, I don't know, he must be a remarkable fellow, because he managed to not, the, the Japanese incident of flying off, um, abandoning this country, uh, signed on the dotted line, he managed to keep the Hilton Network together. We've got brand names. The rest is history. But those, these are these opportunities that we've missed. Um, the, the, Mr. Rajapaksa had this opportunity. Now Messrs. Sirisena and Vikram Singh had uh, an opportunity to capitalize on the people's frustration from the, uh, from the Rajapaksa uh, misdeeds, right? Not forgetting what their good page was. But again, they seem to have messed it all up. Um, and our complaint is that the opposition, I, I don't know what they've been doing. I, I really don't know. We, we have done our part. People of this country have listened to us. That's why, why have we you not, why you, have you you not mentioned protested? the fact that we were, we were not polled 50%? Oh, it's a figure. You should be able to get the 50% I mean, when it comes to the decisive election. But you know that but you're never going to get to that without... You, you're going to have to address this issue of human rights and reconciliation. No, obviously, because yes. Because the minority is rather anything, suspicious if there was at anything the moment. lacking, there had been internal discussion about what went wrong. We, we, are, we like to put ourselves correct. You know, we, we, want to, uh, we want to correct ourselves. If there are mistakes during our regime, our, during our time of uh, governance, we want to correct them and come to a better path. And we want to convince the people in relation to that, that, that issue. Okay, human rights and also in relation to management of international affairs. We have to get into the good books of you know, United States so, so of America and Europe, I, whether we like it or not, because yes. they are still trying to govern the world. So we are a small nation. So we have to have when, we when have I, to be in the good I books sit, of India, US back, and uh, Europe. When I sit back and reflect on what you said about the achievements of the Rajapaksa years, about the power station, so on, and you mentioned Norcholi and so on, but I'm thinking to myself, Norcholi, these were nice ideas, 
and nicely done, but only if they were done uh, properly. Now, if, for example, if we had Noricholi, and these are all ifs, and our whole life's all about ifs here yeah. in, in Sri Lanka, uh, if it had been. Now, we, we've had all these troubles with Noricholi, and the reason it becomes so critical is because uh, ultimately the, the, the cost should be lower. Yes. But, so therefore, when it's off, uh, we miss uh, we, we, we can't handle the, the cost, high expenses. The cost must have been higher than this, if not for Norachole. Okay, he got the investment, Chinese came and built the Norachole power project, but there had been few uh, in relation to mechanical what, issues. But can, what the if, president, can the president of this country get into these nitty gritties and sort out the well, technical well, issues? Well, well yes, yeah, if, because, if they, I mean, if, the even, president, even to date, yes. even to date, if not for the hydropower electricity, yeah. coal power is the, the cheapest uh, uh, way of generating electricity. So yes. we can't be in need of another coal been. power project. This yes. government yeah. does not have a proper program in relation to electricity generation. This country, half of the country would be in darkness the, the, by 20 the, the reason, I, the yes. reason yes. that Mahindra Rajapaksa so, takes so much of flag one thing, is because he yeah. was very authoritarian and he, he did things like that. If he wanted it done... So it that's the leadership it, country needs. Yes, and people therefore, are asking but, for leadership and, that and, nature. And therefore, Doctor, when, when, we, when it comes for criticism, we are quite right in saying, Mr. Rajapaksa, what did you do about Norichole? Because your people close to you they knew what they were doing, and what they did was they supplied us with something that was below we, standard. We, we knew about a lot of things in relation to management of economy, that's the main concern. We knew it better than these people, so we had the micro macroeconomic view, we knew the microeconomic uh, picture of the Sri Lankan economy, yeah. so that's why economy was going at a decent pace in relation to power generation, also into education, and also about the health sector also. You know, we had our program going on. So that's why the statistics in, statistics in relation to health services, education and also about the other social parameters went up. So it has come to a middle class economy. So it's, it was a lower middle class economy. We were going ahead with some um, 4,000 per capita income. So yeah, for the first time in the history, per capita income of this country came down from 3,896 to 3,888 in 2000. 16. That was the second second time in the history of Sri Lanka since independence. 2001 had gone down, and that was the the second time. So per capita income was going down. Country had recorded the lowest economic growth rate of 3.1 last year. So there is no uh, foreign investment coming to this country, despite the popular belief that they have a very good relationship with all the countries in the world. So no no direct investment. Uh, the government government investment into infrastructure had gone down. And on the other hand, uh, the, what they promised the people of the northern part of the country in relation to devolution. They are not delivered that. There are no constitutional amendment. They have not are come you, out with are anything you, justifiable. Are you being, so are they, you so this government opposition. is a failure. This government is a failure, but the big, bigger question is how successful will you all be at the next poll? Oh, and will that poll come soon? We've only got a minute. So you got to answer no, all we, these are, we are very, very, uh, we are very uh, optimistic about what's going okay. to happen. So we had a recent amount of uh, votes being polled towards our side. So yeah. we're going ahead with the, if they hold the provincial council elections in December this year, so you should be able to see that we are, that our ground level is most, uh, more strengthened. Right. And we are facing the presidential election in October 2019. So it's just a year ahead. So you should be able to see. I think what are you doing in, in this year ahead? Very quickly, 30 seconds, because somebody shouting. Sorry, I didn't get it, yes. Uh, what are you doing in this next uh, 18 months? No, we are so? strengthening our uh, the grassroots level. Uh, are you, are you, are you, are you are going you, ahead? Uh, are you going to address the concerns of the uh, of the minorities? Of course, yes. That's a serious concern. You're seeing that we apart are going, with the Muslim, going, Muslim community. Apart from going for iftars and so on. No, no, no. We have, we have come to a policy decision in relation to the issues pertaining to the Muslims and the Tamils of this country. We right. don't want the history to repeat. We are we want to portray as you don't a, want the mistakes. a friendly don't want to party. The mistakes. Oh, really, yes, we don't want to. We want to portray so as a party they have a friendlier towards Muslim community and also the, the Tamil community. Whatever right. in relation to devolution we are we opposed to give what is possible under the unitary constitution. I look I look forward to reporting on your activities because it looks like you have a good thing going. Let's see. Let's see how your independence and how your commitment to good governance will 
uh, result in better lifestyle for the people of Sri Lanka. Dr. Ramesh Patrana, thank you very much for being on Newsline. Thank you, Faras. It's a and, pleasure to be here. And that's the way it was on Newsline on Friday, the 22nd of June, 2018. Have an absolutely super-duper weekend. Take care and God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Oh,